They say the best way to learn piano is while under a stressful situation. They say the best way to learn how to paint is while a senile old man is judging you. Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate. They say the best way to achieve happiness is to watch a Dante Ravioli video. Hello friends, my name is Dante and today I bowed my head in shame as I took one of the most action-packed games of all time, injected it into my system and said no! Today I will not exercise my second amendment rights. Today I tried beating Resident Evil 6 without guns. Can you even fight the chainsaw guy without guns? Can the helicopter be taken out without guns? Is Uga Uga even defeatable without the use of guns? And will I be able to impress J. Jonah Jameson with my tempo? Not, not quite my tempo. All of these questions will be answered along the way, so let's jump directly into the journey, boys. Also, I'm really excited for Resident Evil 3's release, and God must have been shining his golden light on me this day, because my friend Reed designed some sick looking Resident Evil posters. It's got Leon and Claire from Resident Evil 2, Jill from the Resident Evil 3 remake, Nemesis and the Tyrant, and overall, it's just a really awesome poster to have if you're as big a fan of Resident Evil as I am. I even got one for myself, and damn son, look at how big that is! Look at how happy I am! It's a real satisfied lad if I've ever seen one. Anyway, if you want to buy a poster for yourself as well, you can go to radrendering.com and use my referral code DANTE, which helps support me. So basically, you guys get an awesome Resident Evil poster, and you get to support me at the same time. I may be a little biased here, but it doesn't get much better than that. Check the description below for all information and the link to the website. Back to the quest! So if it's not obvious yet, I chose Jake and Sherry's campaign because I realized I was going to be getting through most of this challenge using my old meat hook strategy. And guess what? Jake is a meat hook master. Heck, you just look in his general direction the wrong way and he'll start slapping your mom around. He's a rootin' tootin', paragraph flutin', scar-faced cahootin'. But then there's also Sherry. I don't know much about her, but she has a stun rod. So who did I choose? Jake, soy boy of the ninth generation, a real bad boy. The type of guy who isn't the real Slim Shady, but still stands up. Or Sherry, the sweet innocent angel who was arguably a complete psychopath as a kid. I think the answer is pretty obvious. I also chose Veteran Difficulty. It's kind of like the Goldilocks story. Not too hot, not too cold, I like this temperature, it's perfect. I started my journey as a simple man earning his simple wages through simple means. It ain't much, but it's honest work. This is where Jake really showed his true powers and goddamn! I could tell that this challenge was going to be a fun one. Sherry picked me up, I practiced some slap attacks, and we were on our way. Apparently I was the cure for mankind, yawn, and so I was a very important pickle. We emerged into a war zone and I immediately started beating up guys armed with rocket launchers and just overall tested out my superhuman skills. I quickly started to see a problem with bringing fists to a machine gun fight. I mean what was I going to do to the attack helicopter? Use harsh language on it? Clearly the best option was to run. There was another problem though. Sherry still had a gun, and there was nothing I could do about it. The lone wolf skill did nothing against it, and she refused to lose the piece. I mean, technically I could have played on two players to solve this issue, but... Look, just to settle down any concerns any of you young chaps might have, Sherry wasn't really helpful at all. I did 95% of the work anyway, so her using her little pew pew gun didn't really affect the outcome either way. So there we were, clinging to the edge of a cliff when the rubble under my feet gave out. Sherry was about to be left behind, I mean, frig her, right? I don't even know who you are! But right before I left her forever, without ever looking back, she said something to me that made me reconsider. This way. She was clearly a smart one and she'd be valuable to me on my journey. So bleep bloop blop, I booted the ladder down for her, tried flirting with her a little bit over the excitement of dropping the ladder, and to my surprise, my ankle betrayed me. Sherry was right there, and she didn't even help me. I had to climb up myself. There's no I in team, Sherry! I yeeted my partner up to a high place, she kicked down a stripper pole for me, and I arrived at the slowest damn helicopter chase in history. I mean, I was taking my time, but these numbskulls just couldn't shoot me! I was convinced he was purposely missing! Then they just randomly blew up, and I got away. I honestly don't know how I'm still alive. Do not mess with me, humans. Sherry and I participated in the battle royale, we failed horribly, and that's when I spotted someone familiar. No, wait. It couldn't be. Sherry and I ran for our damn lives and I kept trying my hardest to cut her off, but she was just too fast. See, 
You don't need to run faster than the terrifying demon. You just have to run faster than Sherry. Yeah, run away. You're lucky this window's in the way of me slapping those cheeks raw. Oh, thank God. But you know, something about that boy is bugging me. I just can't pin it down. Anyway, so far so good. Gun usages were at an all-time low, and I was feeling real good. That is, until the strange man busted through the debilitated roof, and right there, that's when it hit me. This man, this thing, was my long-lost son, Uga Uga. 37 years ago on a dark and stormy night, I went out to the gas station for milk and told my little Uga Uga to stay home. Long story short, I never came back from the gas station and my little Uga Uga has been salty ever since. Unfortunately, I didn't have my belt this time around, so he was gonna have to take his beating the old-fashioned way. I don't think he's too keen on it. We'll just have to get over it then, huh? Yeah, get over it already! It was a long and hard battle and my knuckles were starting to turn red, but goddamn did it ever impress Sherry. I was a little nervous here that my slaps wouldn't be enough to take him down. I mean, look at that hulking stud. But the odds were starting to lean in my favor. After taking many beatings from him and pondering my existence in this earthly realm, going to bars and beating on innocent women, and acting very inappropriately out in public. How do you get- may, may I touch your biceps? I just don't- ooh, ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. How, please tell me, I've been working at this for, for months and, uh, these don't hold up, man. Are you impressed? Oh God! I was more confident to battle Uga Uga. I kicked him in the balls, I uppercut him in the balls, and I dodged every one of his attacks like a total mad lad. Eventually, he couldn't take it anymore. And for my sins, Sherry and I were sent to the underworld. I swear, this mission gets harder by the minute. You know what else gets harder and harder by the minute? My will to live. I tried praising Sherry after a job well done, and okay, I might have been trying to flirt with her just a little bit, but in the end, it didn't really work out. Yes. Yes. Not bad. Not bad. So you're saying that complimenting women actually isn't the best way to get them to like you? That's where the Share Bear and I came across some terrifying frigging mannequins. Then we met my best friends Chris and Piers, and I greeted them the same way I usually greet my grandma when I see her in the old age home. You are a worthless, friendless, flip little piece of shit whose mommy left daddy when she figured out he wasn't Eugene O'Neill. What did you just say? Aw, gonna cry? Gonna piss your pants maybe? After being as charismatic as Onision and making lots of new friends, I sat there with my homies as we all acquainted with the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man gone wrong. Sherry and I were the only smart ones there, ah! and to be honest, this whole fight was super easy. It was mostly just time consuming. Yes, I know literally everyone but me had a gun and was using it, but again, if these characters weren't armed, I still would have been able to get through this area. I can only control so much, give me a break! After breaking two of the aircraft turrets, we made our way to the basement and were faced with an indestructible door. I am taking full credit for that breach. I did some parkour, climbed a ladder, I guess? And the big one was finally destroyed Hiroshima style. Now don't celebrate just yet. Here's where I failed the challenge. We slammed our bodies into the nearest chopper and boy oh boy, Uga Uga was upon us. We were doing a fairly good job and anytime he opened a new door in the helicopter, I'd slap him back out. Heck, we even made it to the other chopper but this is unfortunately where all hell broke loose. We were forced to shoot Uga Uga out of the sky. I tried absolutely everything I could to avoid this failure. I waited for 20 minutes on the chopper until time ran out. I forced Sherry to do my dirty work for me. Shoot, I even tried peer pressuring little Sherry into shooting down the steel beasts, but nothing worked and eventually I caved and took down my son myself. It kills my heart to do this, but here's inevitable gun usage number one. Don't leave just yet though, you'll want to watch until the end to see if this is the only gun usage I had to suffer through, or if there were many many more. Not to mention, you're gonna be missing out on all the dank memes. And so here I was, stuck in a warm cabin alone with a female. I thought back to my past, and my flirting techniques really weren't that good. Okay, hang on. Let me work up the courage to do this. Breathe in and out. Okay. 
Ma'am. Ma'am, I think you looked like you needed a back massage. <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa! It was an accident. I don't condone this behavior. Please, please, drink up. <laughs> Be free. So I just went for the aggressive approach. This is awkward. Unfortunately for me, the N-word police were back. They wanted my N-word pass, but I didn't have it with me today. You'll never make me say the N-word on YouTube! They were getting to be a little too much to handle, so Sherry and I had to bounce. Again, you don't have to run faster than the avalanche. You just have to run faster than Sherry. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. So again, I'd like to reiterate. We were stuck at the top of a random derelict mountain out in the freezing cold Himalayas. No life to be seen within 100 miles of where we were, and yet there was still some random guy who just strolled out of nowhere to be completely penetrated by Uga Uga. Talk about wrong place at the wrong time, am I right? <laughs> be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> oh god, oh no! The caves were really spooky and dangerous, and at long last, I thought we had made it out. <gasps> Sherry! Oh my god, Sherry! You wouldn't believe it! I found the way out! Oh. Oh, oh, my back. Well, there go my chances of ever hooking up with her. I couldn't apologize, so I did her one better and complimented her on her strong back muscles. Not bad. Thanks. You know, apparently Uga Uga is deaf and blind, so I don't know what the big deal is. I mean, look at this! You call this guy a killing machine? Jake, I need you to distract him. Okay, Sherry. Huh. I thought that'd work. <laughs> what do you think of that, sucker? Quiet, he'll hear you. No. No, I don't think he will. I was so bold, in fact, that I started raising my voice at Sherry when Uga Uga was literally feet away from us. Sherry. Roger. Sherry. No. Hurry up. No. Long story short, he heard me yelling, we gave him a taste of his own medicine, and as his lifeless body hung there on the cold rocky wall, all I could feel was sadness. Did he deserve this? Was I in the wrong? After all, the little guy was only mad at me because I pulled the gas station father card on him. I knew Uga Uga was gone forever, but I still asked myself, was it worth it? Was it worth it? We escaped the mountains together, and there was good news, bad news. The good news was, my son was still alive! Hell yeah! The bad news was my son was still alive. After my own son kidnapped me without my consent, I woke up in a naughty boy institution and sadly accepted my fate. I hadn't seen Sherry in months, and let's just say, it put me in a really dark place. Sherry, now I know I was wrong. You messed up, and now you're gone. Just give me a second here, guys. That took a lot out of me. They had been slapping my hands with rulers for months, and I had had enough! The security in this place was horrible! Somehow I was able to destroy each and every one of the gentlemen with my meat hooks, and it was time to find out what the code for the door was. Are you kidding me? There's no way that's the code. This place has the worst security in the world. Oh god, Jake, look away! And what do you know, we found Sherry. I was doing damn well, about halfway through the game with only one gun usage to my name. But then I remembered. Band practice. I desperately tried to play some piano for band practice, but the guys around the room just wouldn't leave me alone. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will fuck you like a pig. Everything was going decently well. That is, until a goddamn tank busted through the doors. It's never a normal day in the ravioli household. I yeeted my way to the second floor and noticed that Sherry couldn't follow me up. But I sure as hell wasn't gonna leave her behind. Come on! I'm on it! Hurry up! I heard you, okay? Hurry up! Oh! I'm not ready to die! Ow! I'm not ready to die! I eventually got her up, we hopped onto the motorcycle, and we were out of there. Now I'm just gonna say this, during the motorcycle part, there were sometimes explosive barrels we needed to shoot. At these parts I literally did nothing. I didn't press any buttons, I didn't twiddle the thumbstick, I just let it be, but Sherry still shot the barrels anyway! Should that count as a gun usage? Yeah, it probably should, so I'll put it down as number two. Right after that, we come to inevitable gun usage number three, when Sherry is forced to use her gun on the guys on the highest peaks of the tallest towers. Yay! 
Everyone else was fine and easy to deal with, but of course those four jerks up on high places had to hide from my slap attacks. Get this, we could destroy the helicopter without guns. Four weak boys who probably drink almond milk for breakfast? Nah. One big heavily armored helicopter boy? Aw uh, yeah. I'm not completely sure how it works, whether it's timed or random or what, but all I did was run around like a dummy, grabbed onto the helicopter's rope the first chance I got, GET TO THE CHOPPER! made my way to the top, and started slamming my foot down on the chopper's windshield. Apparently Jake wasn't hitting them leg days quite as often as he should have, so I was just standing there wasting my time on the helicopter looking like a complete idiot in front of Sherry. As angry as I was, it was kinda peaceful up there with my boy. No really though, I think all you have to do is grab onto the rope once, get knocked off, and then wait out the helicopter to crash. That's my best guess, but hey ho, we actually took the helicopter down without the use of guns. But Chris used guns to take it- SHUT THE HELL UP! Downtown wasn't too bad. I fought some terrifying monsters, slid across tabletops for no other reason than to look cool, and all of a sudden I found myself face to face against the big man himself, the chainsaw guy. Now this guy was a tricky one for sure. But as always, there was a good strategy to use against him. Basically what I do is throw myself aggressively onto my back, bait the dum dum into attacking me with his chainsaw, and when he least expected it, I'd give him the worst back massage of all time. After doing this a few dozen times, I was able to penetrate him like Joel from The Last of Us, which gave Sherry a perfect opening to do the same, ending our problem right then and there. You know, I felt a little bit of sadness at this moment. After all, I was Wesker's son, so really, all of these creations were my babies. My sons! I sat there at my son's funeral, feeling the horrible pain of losing another one of my babies. He turned into a pickle chainsaw guy. You would have loved it. Speaking of sons, I came across Uga Uga again and he was pissed. But at least he filled that empty void in my heart. As spooky as he was, I wasn't gonna let him run my life anymore. I wasn't gonna let him push me around anymore! I took the form of Robert De Niro and started beating the crap out of my son until he ran away. This cycle repeated and repeated until the nearby radio tower fell over and crushed Uga Uga's entire skeletal system. Another one of my sons lost, and so soon after the last one. I found it hard to hold back the tears as I held yet another funeral for Uga Uga. He... He turned himself into a pickle. A pickle, goddammit! <laughs> As sad as I was, I still complimented Sherry for helping me kill my son. Still have to earn those brownie points, know what I mean? This is where we came to Chainsaw Boy Part 2. This part was pretty difficult, but I eventually found out that all I had to do was take out his little lackeys and then give him a good old beating until I was able to kick him into the goddamn sign. BE GONE THOUGHT! But of course he came back. Got crushed with a massive wad of steel, came back again, and I got so fed up that I just left Sherry to deal with him alone. Luck seemed to be on our side though, because Ada saved the day out of nowhere. What a good person. You know, I didn't even know whether to be sad about my son's 47th death. I was sure he'd be back again at some point. This stuff was really starting to mess with my head. There's not much to say about the lab. The wormy guys were kind of icky and gross, but they were pretty easy to avoid. Then I found out that Chris was my father's killer, and for some reason, even though Jake didn't know his father and found out he was a supervillain, he still wanted to kill Chris over it. Jake pulled the trigger and barely missed Chris. I guess to teach him a lesson or something, I don't know. I'm surprised Piers didn't shoot Jake on instinct, but you know Piers. He's a coward. A bit of dodging guys with rocket launchers later, Sherry and I finally came to the final battle arena of the game, the super hot fire room. And of course, my goddamn son STILL wasn't dead! We already had three different funerals for you, you selfish piece of shit! He was quite the angry pickle, and I pulled out all of my best moves. You better believe I slapped those cheeks with the power of Zeus. After a good long beating, Uga Uga kicked my only gun into the fiery flames of hell, and I just looked at him like, bruh. It was an epic battle. Meat against meat. Slapsticks against slapsticks. And sweaty bodies against sweaty bodies. At one point, I thought it was all over. I was getting dizzy and I knew I'd be knocked out with the next punch. So I pulled out my pro wrestling moves, beat his meat in a totally wholesome way, and finally slapped him to his death. I watched in agony as we held my son's last funeral. Rest in pepperonis, Uga Uga. Sherry and I were ready to bounce out of there when we came across the most dangerous elevator in the universe. And wait a minute. Is that Uga Uga? God damn it, I can't mourn you! Would you just stay dead? I had had enough of my son's bullshit. I gave him no mercy. 
I whipped objects at him, sent harsh language his way, and finally pulled the trigger on him with Sherry. It killed my soul to pull that trigger, not just because Uga Uga was my facially challenged son, but because this brought us up to a good four gun usages. Was he finally dead and gone? Would he be back in another three minutes? I didn't know. Moral of the story, don't buy milk at gas stations. God! But hey, there's a silver lining to this whole thing. Sherry and I finally progressed to the grade school level and held hands. Jake, you absolute player! So in the end, did we beat Resident Evil 6 without guns? Unfortunately, no. But as always, it came damn close. I lost many sons along the way, held many funerals, and made lots of enemies. But in the end, Sherry was the only thing that mattered to me. Before you leave, don't forget to check out those awesome Resident Evil posters in the description below. Remember to use code DANTE if you want to support me. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me because I make gaming challenge videos every week and make sure to click that little bell or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. Just make sure you click that bell. Thanks for watching, check out the many other gaming challenges on my channel, and I'll see you... Thick boys! In my next video.